Five steps to study with Obsidian. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about studying with Obsidian and how I use it to revise for exams. I have to study for a British Computer Society exam. The exam covers topics from a textbook plus four different top courses that I have attended. Each of these courses come with its own printed slides. To study for this exam, I wanted to create a workflow that will incorporate the following techniques to help me pass the exam. Number one, creating mind maps to provide an overview of the subject. Number two, create a study plan to structure my study tasks and track my progress. Number three, use the Pomodoro method to work through my study tasks. Number four, using the outlining method to create notes that summarize content into revision notes so I can understand the content better and I can explain it to someone else. Number five, using spaced repetition and active recall to remember my notes and recall it in the exam. This video will show you how these techniques can be incorporated into Obsidian and help you develop your study workflow for your particular subject. Please remember, my workflow is adapted to help me pass the exam I'm taking and you need to adjust yours accordingly. If you know of other techniques and tools that could help me with my studying, please let me know in the comments. If you're interested in more techniques, tools and hacks for your workflow, please subscribe to my channel. In my workflow, I get information for my revision from different sources. These include textbook, course slides, previous exam questions, and finally, Google to fill in the gaps. Using these sources, I create a mind map to provide an overview of the topic using Miro. Using the subtopics of the mind map, I will create a study plan for me to follow in Obsidian. For each subtopic, I create an Obsidian revision note to summarize content I consume from different sources. From each revision note, I will create an Obsidian question set note, which lists out all the questions related to that subtopic. The question sets will be stored in my Neurocache or Anki question bank to practice as part of my revision. Let's look at each stage separately. Mind map. In this stage, I create a mind map for the topic. I've used Miro to create my mind map. I've created a video previously about creating mind maps in Miro, so I won't get into details of how I made it. The reason I created mind maps are, it gives me an overview of the subject on one page and helps me organize different concepts. It helps with long-term memory recall. It helps break down the topic to create a study plan, with each subtopic becoming a revision note in Obsidian. Once you have created your mind map, you can embed the mind map into Obsidian via iframes. The Miro board needs to be set to a public view to make it accessible in Obsidian. You need to get the code from the Miro board embed option and copy it into your Obsidian node. Once copied, it can be displayed in the preview mode of your node. Study plan note. I've started creating a study plan which lists out the subtopics that I have to learn. The benefits of creating a study plan in Obsidian are, all your notes and schedules are in one place, Obsidian supports tick boxes in the Markdown language so you can track your progress. The study plan becomes a table of contents to link to other notes. Let's see it in action. I created a study plan note in Obsidian. It provides links to other notes for easy access. I added a tick box for each subtopic using the open bracket space close bracket. You can activate the tick box in the preview mode. As you build out your revision notes and question sets, you can see them in the local graph view. I've also added a Pomodoro timer from Pomofocus into the plan note so I can use the method for studying. Again, this is embedded using iframes. The code will be in the description to help you. Revision notes. Revision notes are my notes related to that subtopic. Ideally, these would have been notes that I created during the classroom sessions, but instead I have to do it as part of revision. The revision notes covers details about the source of information, for example, book name, page number, or website link, notes, which is the summary of the essential information I want to learn and remember, comments, covers how the subtopic relates to my experience or any additional information I have. Let's have a look at one in Obsidian. I have a revision note template that I use. The purpose of this is to remind me of the structure I should follow. You can activate the templates via the plugin settings. Once set up, you need to select a folder where your templates are stored. You need to create a template note with the content you want to use. When you want to use it, select the Insert Template button and choose the template you want to use. As I'm writing my revision notes, I think about the questions that the exam could ask or the definitions I need to learn. 
I mostly try and capture bullet points via the outlining method as it's easier for me to see the relationships in the subtopic and to review later. I try and find diagrams that I can include that might explain the concepts better than words. These can be screenshot and copied directly into the note. If I was working with a physical book, I try and find a PDF version that I can use and is a lot simpler to copy and paste the notes than typing them out. After I complete the first pass, I think about how I can explain the ideas and concepts to someone else. If there are gaps when I'm trying to explain it, I use Google to fill it in. I finally think about how it applies to me and my experience. Obsidian has lots of features to support note taking, which I have covered in previous videos, so I think it can be adapted to suit your note taking style. Question set notes. These are a list of questions that I've created from my revision notes. The structure is usually a question with an answer. I have added tags to help me group questions together and make it easier to find in the search. Let's look at some examples. I link question set notes to the revision notes so I know via backlinks the source of the question. I use the fold indent functionality of Obsidian to help me practice the questions without seeing the answer. You can set the functionality by activating the fold indent option in settings. I store all my questions in its own folders. Question bank. To practice spaced repetition and active recall techniques, you can import the question sets to an app which will test you based on the time between queries and your confidence in answering the question. Spaced repetition is a technique that schedules questions based on how new they are and how difficult you find them. Active recall is a technique that uses questions to actively make you remember the answer as opposed to passively learning by reading a book or viewing a video. By making you recall the answer, it helps your mind store them in long-term memory. The two apps I have looked at to support these techniques are Neurocache and Anki. Neurocache is a mobile app on both iOS and Android. It can import data from many different sources, including Markdown. To ensure the Markdown file is readable, you need to add flashcard hashtag after your question and ensure you add three dashes after the answer. You can add additional hashtags after the flashcard hashtag if you want to group up the questions in Neurocache. You can then select the folder with your question set notes or the individual note. Over time, the app will remind you to go through the question. If you know the answer and feel confident about it, Neurocache will remind you after a more extended period of time. If you are not sure, replay the question sooner. Neurocache has a free service, but there is a premium service you can subscribe to which has many additional features. The developer has done a great job with the app and I enjoy using it. Another app that I see people using is Anki. Anki has been around a long time and has great many features including synchronization between systems, supporting different media types and free question decks to access. To get the questions into Anki, I created a Python script to make a text file from my question set note. I'll share the code I will use if you want to use it. I run the script via Alfred and import it into Anki manually. The script follows the same structure that I have used in my question template. It looks for a line that starts with Q colon for a question. It then looks for A colon for the answer. It also looks for tags colon to find the tags. If it finds the three dashes, it will start looking for a new question. It uses this information to generate an import file using a semicolon for each section, so avoid using semicolon on your question set. There are other more sophisticated scripts which add a lot more features. I recommend you using these for better integration with Anki. I've provided a link in the description. Once in Anki, you can group the questions into different decks and Anki will schedule it for you. You can also create custom study decks if you want to review on your schedule. In my implementation, I have stored each question set in a separate deck and have a exam deck over it. Anki is available as a desktop app for free, but costs addition for a mobile app, which goes to supporting the development of the product. In this video, I've shown you a workflow for studying using Obsidian. Mind maps help you to have an overview of the subject and help you break it down to manage and plan. A study plan with Pomodoro 
helps you keep the focus on the revision notes. Revision notes help you bring in different sources and ideas about a topic. Creating questions helps you prepare for your exam and actively thinking about the subject. Using a question bank like Neurocache or Anki helps you use space repetition and active recall to improve your memory of the subject and gets you ready for your exam. If there are techniques that could help with my studying, please let me know in the comments. If you're interested in more techniques, tools and hacks for your workflow, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.